Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant. Today, I'm going to be covering a very short book titled That Quail Robert. I'm in the mood for this one because it's short and the current events in the state I live are putting me in the mood for some bird awareness. So, first off, this book is copyright 1966. This is the first Harper Perennial edition published 1992. The cover design and illustration were by Dugald Sturmer from 1992. The back cover says this about the author. Born on Cape Cod, Falmouth, Massachusetts, Margaret A. Stanger grew up in her pioneer parents' home in Iowa. With a BA from Grinnell College and an MA from Columbia University, where she also studied law, Miss Stanger was graduated from Boston Children's Hospital as a registered nurse. She returned to the Cape to live in Orleans, where she became one of Robert's closest human friends. Illustrator Kathy Baldwin, another friend and neighbor of Robert's, graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design. This book isn't long. It's only... 127 pages and keep in mind some of those pages are illustrations such as this page this page is actually the where the titular phrase came from one day the telephone repairman came he had read about Robert in the local paper but still was far from prepared to find him examining each tool practically standing on tiptoe to look in the tool case, talking all the time. When the repairman called the operator to check on the condition of the telephone, Robert hopped up on his shoulder ready for a visit. The man was enchanted. Of course, we could hear only his end of the conversation, but what went on at the other end of the line was obvious. It went like this. Checking on number 17? No. No, there isn't anything on this line. Do you know what those sounds are? It's a quail. No, I'm not kidding. Honest, it's a quail. Wait a minute. He held the mouthpiece up to Robert, who responded as he always did. How about that? Then, sure, it's in the house. You don't think I'm calling it from out in the woods, do you? It's that quail, Robert. It was a never-ending source of interest to watch people's reactions to Robert. Of the hundreds who called on him, only perhaps three or four failed to respond to the marvel of this friendly, bouncy, affectionate, and sociable little bird, a member of a species known for timidity and shyness. This book is about a quail named Robert, whose nest was found while the owners of a house were mowing their lawn, and they trimmed everywhere around that nest, but left the spot where the nest was on the ground in tall grass. And then they monitored the situation, and eventually that nest of eggs hatched, all but two eggs. One of the eggs never hatched, and the other did hatch after some incubation a couple of days incubation by the residents of the house and some friends. At the time of the quail's birth, they decided to name it Bobby, but upon seeing how distinguished it seemed, one of the caretakers said, no, that quail is a robber. And so the quail was named Robert. Now, as time goes on, it's learned that Robert is more of a bobby with an eye. The quail was actually female instead of male. She laid an egg. But despite that, they still called Robert, Robert. What I find really interesting is that on page 48, which is only about halfway into the book, there's a scream from the other room. And it turns out Robert stood up, shook himself, gave a contented little chirp, and walked off, leaving an egg. Such excitement! I was telephoned to immediately, as were several other devoted friends. To our surprise, the next issue of the local paper contained an article with a large headline, Robert Shrieks, 
lays first egg. There was by this time considerable local and even statewide interest in Robert, so this was quite an event. Immediately after accomplishing this feat, Robert rushed to his, excuse me, I mean her, tray and began eating as though she had never seen food before. And how she drank! As for the egg, she could not have cared less. She completely ignored it and seemed glad that the whole business was over. It was a full-sized egg, not a smaller, pullet-sized variety such as newly laying hens produce. It was the real thing. Mildred had picked Robert up and stood murmuring, comforting, congratulatory, and female communications to her, adding, Well, once again you have taught us something. It may take a while for us to learn to call you she instead of he, but we will. We will. That part of the book was especially interesting to me because for 48 pages before that moment, they only used male pronouns in the book. After that moment, they only use female pronouns with the book. And I thought it was a very nice moment because just as they could very easily change their use of pronouns for a bird, a pet, it seems to me really easy to just change pronouns for a person. And the ease at which this author did so in 1966 for a pet should indicate that it shouldn't be really hard to do that for a person in 2023. So that was a cute little moment to me. And I like this book overall. It is very sweet, touching. There's all these sorts of moments. There's a good one, if I can find it. There's a moment on page 85 in the chapter titled Callers that really intrigued me. Most people called ahead to make an appointment to see Robert. However, some, even strangers, just appeared at the door. When I greeted such a stranger and heard, pardon me, but is this the place where the little I knew? They usually came in a bit apologetically, saying they hoped they were not inconveniencing me, that they would only stay a minute, and so on. Those minutes were always magnified, often reaching hours. One such protracted minute involved a young man who makes and sells beautifully carved birds. He got word to me that he was going to some sort of gathering and would like to stop for a few minutes if he could see the quail. I was more than glad to have him come and immediately thought what a lovely Christmas gift for the Kienzels a Mackenzie quail would be. He came accompanied by his brother. Robert greeted them at the kitchen door, investigating their shoes as she always did. Both young men stood motionless, almost speechless. I suggested that we go into the other room and the bird carver said, May I look at her a little more? Oh, certainly, I replied. She will come with us. They came into the keeping room very cautiously as though they were afraid they would frighten her away. They told me after an hour or two that they were astonished that they could actually see and touch her. They had expected a fleeting glimpse of a little shy, wild thing as she ducked under some piece of furniture. We all sat around the table with Robert on it, and I leaned back and listened. I finally had to get them paper and pencil. Those boys knew their bird anatomy. They conversed between themselves about the angle of the lateral this and the dorsal that, examined a feather Robert dropped as though it were a jewel. Once the carver remarked, more to his brother than to me, I've carved lots of quails, but I always made a big mistake I see now. I never realized that there was a distinct dividing line down the breast center. Look at that. She is really double-breasted. And do you see the iridescence on the gray back feathers? They are almost blue in tone. This is wonderful. It turned out that he had used some little dead bodies as models, and also some nicely mounted ones. But this was life. After they had been with me two hours, one of them looked at his watch and said in amazement, Do you know what time it is? It is almost five. And off they dashed, thanking me almost reverently for the afternoon. I wonder what happened to the hostess who had been expecting them those two hours. And so, all these different moments with strangers coming by to the house to interact with the bird are sprinkled throughout the book. All these different human interactions. And Robert... Her personality shines in every chapter. She's a very, very social animal. And she hangs out and sits there with the people while they're having tea, 
follows the humans around underfoot. It's really, really adorable. Another thing about this book, and it is in very good condition, may be used a couple of times at most. It reads on the inside cover, To Sam on his 78th and more to come birthday, and Carol, who have shown me a great time here. Much love and friendship, Judy. I don't know how much I paid for this book, but I can't imagine it was much. It's only 126 pages, but it is adorable, it is wholesome, it is charming, and it's been 60 years since this book was published, but there's a very unique charm to this book and this quail, and that is why I love this book. And I think if you've liked any of the books about nature and animals that I've covered on this channel, you'll love this book too. My name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant.